everyone. Welcome back. It's theCUBE live in Las Vegas. We've been here since Monday covering the event wall to wall coverage on theCUBE at AWS reInvent 22. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Dave, we're hearing consistently north of 50,000 people here. I'm hearing close to 300,000 online. People are back. They are ready to hear from AWS and its ecosystem. Yeah, I think 55 is the number I'm hearing. I've been using 50 for 2019, but somebody the other day told me, no, no, it was way more than that. I'm like, all right, well, this feels bigger. It does feel bigger. Yeah. It does feel bigger, and we've had such great conversations, as you know, because you've been watching theCUBE since Monday night. We're pleased to welcome, from Sumo Logic, Lynn Doherty, the president of Worldwide Field Operations. Lynn, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, I'm glad to be here. Talk to us about what's going on at Sumo Logic. We cover them, we've been following them for a long time, but what's, what's new? We have a lot going on at Sumo Logic. Um, what we do is provide solutions for both observability and security. And if you think about the challenges that our customers are facing today, everybody as they're doing this digital transformation is in a situation where the data and the digital exhaust that they have is growing faster than their budgets. And especially in what looks like potentially uncertain economic times. And so what we do is enable them to bring that together on a platform so that they can solve both of those problems in a really cost-effective way. What are some of the things that you're hearing from customers in the field where it relates to Sumo Logic and AWS? What are they asking for? Uh, they continue to ask for security. And, and I think as everybody goes on that journey of digital transformation. And, and I think what's going on now is that there are people who are kind of in wave two of that digital transformation, but security continues to be top of mind. And again, as, as our customers are moving into potentially uncertain economic times, and they're saying, hey, I've got to shore up and, and maybe do smarter things with my budget, cybersecurity is one piece of that that is not falling off the table, that their requirements around security, around audits, around compliance, don't go away regardless of what else happens. How do you fit in the cloud ecosystem generally? AWS specifically, I think AWS is generally perceived as a more friendly environment for the ecosystem partners. We saw CrowdStrike yesterday, you know, stock got crushed. They had a great quarter, but not as great as they thought it could be. Yeah. And one, some of the analysts were saying, well, it could be Microsoft competition at the low end of the market. Okay, AWS is like, the ecosystem partners are really strong in security, a lot of places to add value. Where does Sumo Logic fit? Yeah, we are all in with AWS. So AWS is our platform of choice. It's the platform that we're built on. It's the only platform that we use. And so we work incredibly closely with AWS. In fact, last year, we were the first ever AWS ISV Partner of the Year for, as Sumo Logic, which um, we're not as big as some of the other players, but it just is a testament to the partnership yeah. that we have with AWS. When you're out in the field talking with customers, we talked about some of the challenges there, but where are your customer conversations? You talked about security and cyber as, as not falling off the table. In fact, it's, it's rising up the stack. It's a board level conversation. So where are the customer conversations that you're having? Are they, are they at the developer level? Are they higher? Are they at the C-suite? What does that look like? Yeah, it's, it's actually at both the developer and the C-suite. And so, there's really two motions. The first is around developers and practitioners and people that run security operation centers. And they need tools that are easy to use, that integrate in their environment. And so we absolutely work with them as a starting point because if, if they aren't happy with the tools that they have, you know, the customer can't go on that digital transformation, can't have effective application usage. But we also need to talk to C-suite, and that's a CIO or a CISO, who's really thinking often more broadly about how do we do things as a platform and how do we consolidate some of our tools to rationalize what we're using and really make the most of the budget that we have. And so we come at it from both angles. We call it selling above the line and below the line because both of those are really important uh, people for us to work with. Above the line being sort of the business executives. Business right? executives and C-suite yeah. executives and then below the line are the actual people who are using the product and using it day to day, interacting with the tools. So how are those above the line and below the line conversations you know, different? What, what, are the, what are the above the line conversations? What are the sort of keywords that, you know, that resonate 
let's start there. Yeah, ab above the line, there's a lot that's around how do we make the most of the investments that we're making. And so there are no shortage of tools, right? You can look around this AWS floor and see that there are no shortage of tools and software products out there. And so above the line, it's how do we make use of the budget that we have and get the most out of the investments we've made? and do that in a really smart way, often thinking about platforms and consolidating tools and, and using the tools and getting full value of what they have. Below the line, I think it's really, how do they have really strong ease of use? How do they get the fastest time to value? Because time to value is really important when you're a practitioner, when you're developing an application, when you're migrating and modernizing an application, having tools that are easy to use and not just give you data, but give you insights. And so that's what a conversation with a practitioner for us is, is taking data and turning it into insights that they can use. You know, and it seems like we never get rid of stuff in, in, in IT, but there's a big conversation now when you talk to practitioners, okay, well, you got some budget pressures, your sales cycles are elongating. What are you, how, what are you doing about, a lot of them are saying, well, we're consolidating. And Nowhere is that more needed probably than in security. So how, how are you seeing that play out in the market? Are you able to take advantage of that as Sumo? I think there's the old joke that says there is no CISO who ever says, if I just had one more tool, I'd be secure. <laughs> yeah, <don't laughs> and so I, nobody ever says that. It's not one more tool, it's having effective tools and having tools that integrate. And so when I think of Sumo logic in that space, it's number one, we really integrate with so many different tools out there that give, again, not just security information, but security insights. And so that becomes a really important part of the conversation. When you talk about tool consolidation, that's absolutely, I think, something that has been a journey that a lot of our customers have been on and probably will be on for the foreseeable future. And so that's a place that we can really help because we have a platform that you can leverage our tool on the DevOps side and on the security side, and that's a conversation that we have a lot with our customers. Are you helping bridge those two? The security folks, the dev folks, because we talk about shift left and yeah. CISOs being involved now. Is Sumo Logic helping from a cultural perspective to bridge those two? Yeah, well I think it's a really good point that you make. It's There's part of it that's a technology challenge and then there's part of it that's a cultural challenge and an organization silo challenge that happens. And so it is something that we try to bring our customers together and often start in one area of the business and help move into other areas and bring them together. It, it also comes down to that data growing faster than budgets. And customers can no longer afford to keep multiple copies of the same data and the same metrics and all of that digital exhaust that comes as they move to the cloud and modernize their applications. And so we bring that together and help them get the most use out of it. There are a lot of, we've been talking all week in theCUBE about sort of adjacencies to security. We've been talking about data protections now becoming an adjacency. You know, you talk about uh, resilience within an organization. Everybody was sort of caught off guard, obviously, with the pandemic, not as resilient as they could have been. So it seems like the scope of security is really expanding. You know, they always say it's, it's a team sport. Okay, it's a bromide, but it's true, right? Whereas it used to be, that guy's problem. Yeah. What are you seeing in terms of that evolution? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think the pandemic forced some of that faster than was happening, but it's absolutely something that is going on that cybersecurity is now built in from the ground up. And I've been in cybersecurity for years, and it, uh, it's moved from an afterthought or something that comes after the fact, hey, let's build the application and then we'll worry about security to, it needs to be a secure application from the ground up. And so that is bringing together that dev and SecOps a lot because it needs to be built in. The security piece needs to be built in from the ground up on the development side. Absolutely, the, the threat landscape has changed so much in the last couple of years. It has. The fraudsters, bad actors, whatever you want to call them, are getting far more sophisticated. Yeah. So security can't be an afterthought, can't be a bolt on. It's yeah. got to be integrated, built yeah. in from the ground up for organizations to be able to be, as they've said, resilient. We're hearing a lot about resiliency and the importance of it for any business. For any business. It's important for every business. And if you think about how we interact with companies now, 
Our view of a bank isn't the branch, it's the app. Our view of office, it's right? It's, yeah. it's on the phone, it's on digital devices, it's on a website, and so that is your interaction, that is your experience. And so that plays into, is it up, is it running, is it responsive, that application performance piece, but also the security piece of, is it secure, is my data protected, you know, do I have any vulnerability? Yeah. You must have, being in field operations, a favorite customer story that you really think defines the value proposition beautifully of Sumo Logic. What story is that? Wow, that's a good question. I have, have a lot, I have a lot of favorite <laughs> stories. Uh, you know, we have customers, for example, um, gaming customers that maybe aren't able to predict what their usage looks like. And that's something that we really help our customers with is the peaks and valleys. And so we have gaming customers or retail customers that we're able to take their data sources and they may be at one level and go to 10X in a day without any notice and we're able to handle that for them. And I think that's something that I'm really proud of is that we don't make that the customer's problem. They're their peaks and valleys, their spikes that may happen seasonally in retail, it's Black Friday sales that are coming up, it's a new game that gets released, it's a new uh, music piece that gets released, and they are going to see that, but they don't have to worry about that because of us, and so that really makes me proud that we handle that and take that problem off of their shoulders. I see Pokemon on the website, that's a hugely popular Pokemon, game. Pokemon, I know. Yes. <laughs> Last question for you, we've got about 30 seconds left. If you had a billboard to put up in Denver, where you live, about Sumo Logic and its impact, like an elevator pitch or a phrase that you think really summarizes the impact, what would it say? Yeah, well, it's a really good question. I've got it on my shirt. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's not for the G-rated, but we fix things faster, fix shit faster. And uh, so for us, that's really, ultimately, it's not just about having information, it's not just about having the data, it's about being able to resolve your problems quickly. And whether that's an application or a security issue, we've got to be able to fix it faster for our customers, and that's what we enable them to do. Fix bleep faster. Lynn, it's that's been a right. pleasure having you on the program. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank you. for joining us. <laughs> awesome stuff at Sumo Logic. For our guest and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, live from Las Vegas, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.